Good evening. Tonight's shiur is called For the Love of God and the Animal Within Me. Sounds interesting? Yeah. Okay, I hope it'll be interesting. Certainly enjoyed preparing it. The Midrash tells us one of the reasons why God created the world is God desired a dwelling place down below. What does it mean down below? The lowest possible level by which godliness can be revealed and concealed at the same time. Higher levels, godliness is more revealed and therefore it's not considered uh, the lowest world. This is the lowest world by which exists and godliness it's, it's, of course, everything is sustained by godliness, but it is, seems to have a separate entity for itself, and thus it's called the lowest level. And God desires that in the midst of this darkness or in the midst of this low place, godliness will become revealed through our service, through our what's called avodat habirurim, the work of refinement, of sifting good from bad. When God created the world, in order for there to be a possibility for free choice and for there to be an evil inclination, an animalistic soul, desires and tendencies for the material world which is all a facade and is appealing and attractive to us there has to be the mechanism put forward created for that and that comes from the world of tohu or the world which is confounded and we discussed a little bit on a previous lecture so I don't want to discuss it right now but basically there was a confusion so to speak a lack of unity and harmony because of the lack of unity and harmony there was what's called in Kabbalistic terminology as the shattering of vessels and the vessel so to speak descended to this physical world in the form of impurity or husks so we're not going to go too much into that because it'll take a long time to explain but so just so you'll understand that it was a concept of descent it was a shattering it wasn't a revelation in gradual form so to speak it was more of a shattering by which allows Godliness to be so hidden and so concealed that it could be a challenge it comes it presents itself uh, in the form of a challenge towards all that is good, all that is spiritual, all that is moral, and all that is right. Okay, can we leave it at that? Is that okay? And try and draw from what we discussed a little bit from the world of Tohu, from the world of confusion from the previous lectures, and in future we'll build upon it a little bit more and a little bit more. Our objective in this world is to rectify that world, i.e. means to say, to take those shattered shards, broken pieces, so to speak, broken vessels, that godliness, that the godliness that reflects through them is so minimal that it could barely be felt and seen to the extent that there could be an entity in this world, an idol worship that is contrary to the unity of God or that people themselves like Pharaoh and others call themselves a God, a deity. Or that an individual will even deny that there is a concept of a God. And certainly on a low level, on a smaller level, on a minuscule level, which is also a form of idol worship, the fact that God is not real and relevant in my life. The fact that I'm not conscious of it and feel it on a regular level. That comes from that world, from that broken world, shattered world, so to speak. Our objective is to infuse that world with the harmony and the unity of godliness and uplift that world. And that world, what does it mean that world? That world in this world refers to the physical things in this world, the impurities of the world and the pleasures and desires of the materialism of the world and the concealment of godliness and basically the physical things that we interact 
with and if we interact with them in the right way and the right frame of mind and with the spiritual outlook and approach, we can thus elevate them. And we can thus infuse them with that god, godly harmony that they were lacking in the first place, rectify this world, this broken world, and uplift it. By doing so, we uplift ourselves too, because on the scale of um, the order of descent, that world is a higher world, it's a more extreme level of revelation of godliness than the lower world of tikkun, of rectification, or the world of atzilut, the world of emanation, the first real world that we relate to, which is pure godliness, but nonetheless, the revelation there is not as extreme and intense as a world higher than that that's called the world of Nikodim and referred to as uh, the world of Tohu. I know it's a little bit intricate, a little bit confusing, but just as a mean of introduction, file it, store it away, draw from what we learned a little bit from the previous week, so we discussed it a little bit, and draw on it next time we touch upon it again. I just want to bring out a point that we have to rectify things in this world. And they take the form of things that present themselves in a manner of concealment of godliness. Is that acceptable? Is that, and that comes from a very high source, but it comes down to a low source. Like it says in the holy books, that that which is highest falls the lowest. The brick on the wall that is the highest falls fur- If it falls, it falls furthest away from the... the uh, the place of the wall, the highest apple falls away furthest from the tree. You understand that? So there are very great spiritual sparks that are embedded or that come from that world and are embedded in this world. Our objective is to interact with this physical world and to bring it to its fruition, its completeness and its um, rectification. And therefore, when God created the world, and he saw it was good. But then at one point it said, God saw it was tov me'od. It was exceedingly good. The Gemara tells us, tov refers to when it was God saw it, when God proclaimed that it was good. That refers to the godly inclination. The good inclination. But when God saw it, it was exceedingly good, tov me'od, it was exceedingly good. The Gemara says that refers to the animal inclination. The Yetzirah, the evil inclination that tempts us, entices us to engage in the material world for the sake of the material world, not for the sake of anything else. To develop a love and appreciation and a desire and a pleasure out of the material world and to neglect and to overlook the spiritual dimension of things. Look at the facade, what you touch, what you feel, what you see, etc. Not to go deeper. How is it possible? That God said, when it comes to the evil inclination, God said it was exceedingly good, it was really good. Because obviously that there is something that is to be achieved, something great, noble and lofty that is to be achieved with our interacting, things that we can learn from, and the power and the strength that we can draw from the evil inclination. It is interesting to note, and we'll get to it a little bit later, the word me'od, me'od in Hebrew, exceedingly, is the numerical value of 45. You see it over here, me'od? Oops. See it? Hey, can you see it? It's a bit pale. Mem, alef, dalet. Mem is 40, but down. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It's getting messy here. Yeah, this side, sorry. I beg your pardon. The bottom of the page. Of him. <laughs> Mem, Aleph, Dalet. Can you see it? Mem is 40. Aleph is 1. Dalet is 4. 45. I'm going to get to that in a minute. I'm going to get to that in a minute. A bit more. But just suffice it to say that that is one of the names that is intricately, one of the numerical values of the name of God that is intricately, intricately associated with this concept of elevation that we talked about. The rectification that we talked about. And I will show you how. Now, 
And just incidentally, by the way, that me'od is a numerical value of Adam. Aleph, Dalet, Mem. Adam, man. So man created in the form of man as he is in this world is me'od. It's a numerical value of me'od. What is Adam? Aleph, Dalet, Mem. Why is man called man? Because he comes from the Adama, from the land, from the lowest element of the four elements. He comes from the lowest, from the most um, coarse. Yet man is able to uplift to the highest level. And also, Aleph, Daled, Mem is Aleph is spirituality. Aleph is a numerical value of one, or Alufoshel Olam, master of the world. And Daled and Mem is Dam. Ki Adam wa Nefesh, the Nefesh is the lowest spiritual life force that engages in the body and interacts specifically with the body and is affected by the body. That is the dam, that is the blood that transmits oxygen to the whole body, starts from the heart, and we know the heart is the seat of passion or emotion. Okay. Now, we know that there are different configurations of writing God's name. Generally speaking, there are four. We went through them once, if you recall. They are what's called Ab, Sag, Ma, and Ben. The, 70, the, the name as of God as it's spelled in the full. You know that the name of God is Yud. One of the names of God, or the highest name, one of the highest names of God is Yud and He and Vav and He. The tetragrammaton, and you know that. Okay? That is a name that is associated with rev revelation. That he was, he is, and he will be the omni potence of God. And that the numerical value of that 26, but there are different ways of writing that in its fullest form, because it's spelled Yud and He and Vav and He, correct? But in Kabbalah, many times it spells words in its full manner, in its uh, pregnant manner, in its expanded manner. For example, Yud and He and Vav and He. So you take the Yud and you spell out the letter Yud. How do you write the letter Yud? Yud, Vav, and Dalet. And then hey, how do you spell hey? Now hey, you can write it in different ways. You can write hey, hey, Aleph. Or you can write hey as hey, hey. Or you can write hey as hey, Yud. And Vav, you can spell Vav as Vav, Vav. Or you can spell Vav as Vav, uh, Aleph, Vav, etc. Okay, so I'm not going to concentrate on the higher two names of God. I'm going to concentrate on the lower two names of God. The names of God in Kabbalah as they are called the name Ma and the name Ben. The name Ma, the reason why it's called Ma is because it's the numerical value of the word Ma, in short, Mem and He, which is 45. And how is that spelled? It's spelled over here, down here. It's spelled exactly like this, in the full form. Yud Vav Dalet, the numerical value of that is how much? It's 10. And He and Aleph, the numerical value of that is 6. Then Vav, Aleph, Vav, the numerical value of that is 13. And He and Aleph, the numerical value of that is 6. Altogether is 45, which is the numerical value of Adam, man, which is the numerical value of Me'od, exceedingly good. Then we have another name, the lower name, and I'm going to speak about those names in a minute. And the same concept, but it's spelled a little bit different. Yud, Vav, Dalet is the same. Hey and Hey, instead of Hey and Aleph, Hey, Hey. Instead of Vav, Aleph, Vav, 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 and Hey and Hey. That's another way of spelling God's name in the full. And that refers to a different type of revelation of God's name. Each one of the way we spell God's name refers to a different type of revelation of God's name. All it means is a different type of revelation. For example, if I'm smiling at my son or laughing or, or rejoicing or feeling very proud that they did something good, for example, or if I have to speak with him in a manner of an educator or become a little bit more stricter or severe because they did something wrong, that's a different way by which I'm revealing myself. All of these names refer to just a simple, simply a different way by which God reveals himself. And the numerical value of one of them, oh, the highest one is 72. And the other one is 63, and the other one is 45, and the other one is 52. As I said, as I showed you how they're spelt out. The first two refer to the higher dimension of godliness, and the lower refer to the lower dimension of godliness. What are they? We know that we express ourselves in different ways, correct? 
we express ourselves through intellect. We express ourselves through emotions. We express ourselves through speech. Those four names refer to how God expresses Himself either the higher, more intimate, because what is more intimate? What is closest to me? My intellect, because you don't know my thoughts. You're not privy to what's inside of me. That's my intellect. And I think, and I ponder, and I, and I, and I calculate, and I come to conclusions with my intellect. And then that, the intellect drives my emotion. When I, for example, think about something that is good, or think about God that is great, that drives my emotion to love God or to respect God. Correct? That's the emotions. And then I speak about something. I speak about something that I love, or that I want, or, or teach or speak, speak, teach something that I love, etc. Or speak about something that I want, a desire, I want to achieve it, and go about achieving it. These are all revelations, the way I reveal myself. Similarly, in a similar vein, God reveals himself in this way. The first two names of God refer to the way God reveals himself in the higher, more intimate revelation. The lower two is emo God's emotion and, so to speak, God's kingship or speech. Because the king reveals himself through his speech. You know the command of the king. The edicts of the king. How do you know about the king through his commands, through his speaking? You don't see the king is in his palace. You're lucky to even ever get an appointment. You may not even ever get an appointment. Only if you're the inner ministers and etc. Inner circles, you may get an appointment. How do you know about the king? When you hear about the king, you hear his edicts. You hear what he does, what he's concerned about, um, what he's doing, etc. Through the rule of the king. And the king is very much associated with speech. So God's speech is another word in Kabbalistic lexicon as malchut or God's kingship. Those relate to those two names. And also, remember the four names refer to also, just like the four letters of God's name. So the four full form of the names correspond to the four worlds. Remember we spoke about the four worlds? Atzilut, Biriya, Yetzira, and Asiya. The last, the, high, the first two names are the high worlds. The second two names is, this, is associated with the lower world and predominantly this world, this physical world. Okay, I know it's a little bit, uh, it's a lot, but I wanted to give you a little bit of this introduction because if we understand those two names and how they refer to the lower worlds and how they also refer to, for example, emotions and speech or our lower dimension, we'll be able to understand the shiur a little bit better as we will then come along. Now, as we will, I will, uh, I will speak about it now. The Kabbalists teach us that in the world, every, every world has ten emanations, correct? Three intellectual, or what's called Gar Gimel, uh, Gimel Rishonot, the three foremost revelations. We are, they are their Keter, Chochmah, Bina. They are the more intimate revelations or higher revelations. Every world has these ten. And then, so it's the first group, the more intimate revelation. Then there's the next group, which is called Za, or for short, Zeir Anpin, which is the six attributes of emotions. And then there is the last one, which is called Malchut Kingdom. The body also has different parts. The head is correspond to that name of God, the high name of God, the high world. It is our high world. The torso refers to the emotions. And the, the torso being the body, the hands, and the heart contained therein refers to the Zed Anpin, the next level, which is the name Ma, 40 numerical value 45, which is the main thing of man. What's the main thing of man? My emotions. My emotions are more emotions than intellect. You don't know what's going on in my mind. By my emotions, you see it on my face. And then the bottom part of the, the body predominantly the sexual organ, which is associated with Malchut, or the Noel name of God, which is the trend. That's part of the six, really. But the end of the sexual organ, which is really the part that is associated with interacting with the next level of male, feminine, fe fe female, male. It means to say the interaction of the feminine and male aspect of divinity in the physical world, union between man and, and woman. In the higher worlds, it refers to the union between 
um, the mashpia, the giver and the recipient, um, the uh, the um, middle level and the lower level. Okay. Having given that introduction, you will now be able to a little bit understand why that name, the middle name of God, the th- the third one, which is the numerical value of Ma, 45, is the numerical value of man. Because man's main component is his emotions. That's the main aspect. What's the biggest part of me? My torso. That's that part that corresponds to that name of God. Similarly, in regards to godliness. What is the main revelation of godliness? The emotions of godliness. The six emotions which correspond to the six days of the week. Shabbat, Malchut, being the kingdom of God, the seventh. The three higher ones are, are high. And so too with man as well. Now we can also understand why the last name of God, ba- Ben, which is 52, is a numerical value of Behema, animal. Which refers to the most lowest dimension of, of revelation, which relates to this material physical world, the lowest dimension of this physical world. Okay. And therefore, man, which is me'od, interaction with the lower level, the animal side of us, and the interaction of the material world, that which is most concealed, godliness in this world, done it. it, it, it expressed in the right way, related to in the right way, the right approach, is the union of those two names of God. So therefore, when we do things, when we interact, we make a union between different names of God, different levels of God. We create a, an equation. A, a, it's like a, a chemical uh, reaction. You know, there's a chemical reaction. You put two chemicals together. You get this, you put that, you get this, you get this, you get that. So too, you put different equations of God's name, you get different revelations of this world. Every single mitzvah is like that. Every interaction that we do is like that. Every bracha is like that. Every amen that we say is like that. Everything is very powerfully meaningful. Everything that we do, every mitzvah that we do, we light candles, we put on tefillin. Every one of those things is a, a, so not a chemical uh, reaction, but a spiritual reaction or a union or a fusion of different levels. So when man interacts with his animal side, he brings together and unifies those two names of God and rectifies anything that is diminished in this material world through man's involvement. All right? It's a little bit uh, falling into place, a little bit. Okay. Again, we're limited in time. We can just spend hours and hours just on this, but we can't afford it because that's not what I wanted to talk about. But I needed to give you a little bit of that introduction. Okay, now having said that, we little bit understand why when God created the evil inclination, He said, Behold, it is exceedingly good, very good. Because the animal soul is part and parcel of that last name of God, the name Ben, which is really responsible for creation of this world. That name and the last letter of God's name in the Yud and the He and the Vav and the He equation is really what is responsible for the creation of this physical world. And in an expanded form, it's a numerical value of Ben, which is, uh, which is Behema animal. Now we a little bit understand, although this is not the topic of tonight, but now we a little bit understand why in the temple we dealt with so many animals. What do you need to deal with so many animals for? What God needs a, 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 some sort of a present or, a, or a, a, a gift or a, a bribe? No, it's all about elevating the most lowest dimensions of this physical world, namely the animal. The animal in the world and the animal within me, that exists within me. We both come from... The same source, the same level. And on a Kabbalistic dimension, that refers to the last name of God's name, the lower name of God's name refers to Ben. Not by accident, it happens to be the numerical value of the word Ben, which means son. Which means that ultimately when there is a union between male and female, the objective is to bring 
and now the life source to the world. It's in, incidentally, by the way, the whole concept of intimacy between husband and wife is a very powerful thing that just the union itself, even bereft of creating a child, even outside of the possibility of a woman um, um, conceiving, i.e. because it's the, the, the time of conception is not, or she's beyond the age of conception, still creates spiritual entities. And that's why the union between husband and wife must be done in the most loving, the most respectful, and the most, it's also a spiritual act as well, not just an animalistic act, or one of desire of, of physical pleasure. Because that too creates a bend, so to speak, a child. And that is again involving with our lower dimension. And as I mentioned before, that name predominantly is associated with the sexual organ. And it's interesting that that sexual organ is the one that is responsible for the giving of life, which is the mo- closest thing that can ever be to the Creator, creating life. So we see that the lowest aspect has a highest dimension to it, which is remarkably unique and unbelievable. Again, God desired a dwelling place, i.e., God desired Himself. The essence of godliness to be revealed in the lowest dimension. So here we utilize the lowest dimension, so to speak, of the human kind, of the human being, and through that, reveal the highest level of godliness. And in a, in a human uh, um, capacity, life itself, which is an unbelievable miracle. Having said all of that, that's not what I wanted to speak about really. This is just an introduction to the following. And hopefully we will be able to uh, to finish. So now we understand why we have Avodata Korbanot, the service of the sacrifices in the temple to uplift the animal kingdom, both the animal world and that which predominantly exists within me, the animal drives and tendencies that I have that causes me to lust and desire and love the materialism of this world. The Gemara tells us in the Shema, which is a biblical obligation to recite the Shema, Ve'ahavta we say, Ve'ahavta et Hashem Elokecha bechol levavecha ubechol nafshecha the word me'od again appears there. In, with all of your heart. How is the usual way that you say your heart in Hebrew? Libcha, your heart. Why the Gemara asks, is it spelt with two bets? What do you need two bets for? You had extra ink? We know everything is in the Torah. It's nothing extra. Everything is exacting. Why does it say bechol levavecha? Bechol libcha. Bechol libcha in Hebrew is the correct form of saying your heart. Bechol levavcha. Because there are two dimensions to the heart. Bishnei Yitzrecha, with the two inclinations that you have. You have a godly inclination, spiritual tendencies, but you also have physical drives and tendencies. That too, you must direct to the love of God. And thus, the topic, the love for the love of God and the animal in me, within me. In other words, there is a possibility, if not in a total manner, at least in a manner by which we can fathom, desire, and, and strive for that at least to certain degrees and dimensions by which evil, even the, the, the parts of our animalistic soul and tendencies can be directed towards God. How so? By utilizing and learning from the, and utilizing the power, the instincts, and the, and the, and the, uh, um, what do you call it? The fero- the, 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 uh, the word is. Of, of the evil inclination, but uh, the ferocity. Is that the right word? The ferocity, the, 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 it's, it's power. It's very powerful, it's very convincing, it's very, it's got a very uh, great power of persuasion. It's not all, all of these words I'm looking for, but. <laughs> It may come to me. But let's use the word drive. It's got a very powerful drive. For example, for example, when you love someone. Force. We know, we know that you love someone. So what was it? Force came to my mind. Fourth. The force of the force. force. Okay, force is a good word. Thank you. It's got a 
It's got a very powerful force. There's no doubt about that. You love. You love. We know what it means to love someone. We know that you can love someone to such a degree or love someone to such a degree that you're, you're almost sick. You're rendered immobile. You can't function properly. You can't this. You can't that. You can't go. You can't function properly. We can learn. We can learn how to love God from how we love things in this world. There's no reason why not. We know what love is. I always told my kids, you know, you know what love is. You know what it means to love the football or the cricket or the sports. Or the enthusiasm, the drive that you have, the force and the intensity was the word that I'm looking for. The intensity that you have when it comes to sports and all of these things. Wow, unbelievable. If we would only place that same intensity, that power and that force and that drive in our service of God. We know it's there. We know it exists. So we learn it from our tendencies and drives and love for physical things. You've got it. Now direct it and harness it to the spiritual. Now you understand what the Gemara says. You can, it, there's a possibility to love God from both your inclinations. And that's what we do in the temple. We, we harness the animal dimensions of us to God. Having said that, there's a very wondrous medrash in Bereshit Rabbah in regards to Abraham Avinu. It says that Hashem berach et Abraham bakol. God blessed Abraham with everything. The Gemara tells us what the, the, the definition of that is. That he blessed him with daughters as well. He told now he didn't have a daughter. He only had sons. Now he had the daughters. And a daughter named Bakol. But the Midrash says, what does it mean that God blessed him with everything? Now at that point when God said that already Abraham was very, very wealthy. What could God bless him already with that he didn't have? So is it talking about the past? Well, Abraham of Inu now is aged. He's, 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 he's come of age. And God blessed him with everything. Like looking back, well, he had a good life. He had a good innings. And he was blessed with everything. According to the Midrash, that's not it. According to the Midrash, refers to an achievement by which God blessed him that he didn't achieve on his own. And what is that, says the Midrash? Shehishlito beYitzro, that God gave him the ability, it's a God-given gift, the ability to totally captivate and control his evil or animalistic drives and tendencies, or his, 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 his evil inclination. What? What a perplexing midrash. Who are we talking about? We're talking about Abraham Avinu that had full control. That every one of his tests he passed. God gave him the control over his evil inclination. He showed control of his evil inclination. As we discussed last week, he gave, was giving up, willing to give up his life. He gave up everything. To him you're saying that God gave control of his evil inclination? Well, there are two dimensions of control. The first one is, as we know, that a person, as it says in Sefer Tanya Kadisha, that a person is born with within his human potential and capacity, that the brain, that the intellect can rule one's heart and tendencies. We have the ability to do so, Ron, believe it or not, we have the ability to do so. If a person, for example, has a nature to be upset, or even if he doesn't have a nature to be upset, someone really, really upset him, and right now it's called for that he'll get upset, let's say. One can control himself and not get upset if he wants to. I used to tell my children in the morning when they get up, you know, sometimes children get up in a, with a bad, in a bad mood. You know what I mean? I said, it's, right now, it's up to you now. You can, you, you can choose to be in a bad mood, and then you're in a bad mood, then we get in a bad mood, and then you're going to get in a bigger bad mood, and we all suffer. Or you can choose right now, here and now, <laughs> it's not easy, but you can choose right now, here and now, to be in a good mood. We can do that, we can make that switch. It takes effort, it takes training, we don't always get it right, but if you continually uh, drill that into you, you can control because the, pow the power of the mind is greater than the power of emotion in the mind and the, and the heart. We have it within us to be able to control. That's one level. Then there's another level. 
of which Maimonides speaks about. Maimonides quotes the verse, Nafshi holat ahavatecha. My soul is sick, is lovesick. What does it mean, lovesick? My mother, he says that nothing else, when a person is lovesick, nothing else is on their mind. They cannot think and ponder about anything else but that. So too, my mother, he says, there's a possibility for a human being to be so enthralled and enwrapped in godliness that that's all they think about. They don't see anything else. They don't feel anything else. They only see and feel godliness, spirituality. So they, that's the only thing that they're interested in. Says Maimonides, This is a very great and lofty quality to aspire to and to achieve. Me'od, exceedingly so. Vihi, Ma'alat Abraham Avinu, and it is the quality of Abraham Avinu, this very quality that the Midrash is talking about, that God gave him as a gift. In other words, Abraham Avinu, to, to a certain degree, exercised absolute and total control of himself, to the extent that he was given an extra gift, besides his absolute mastery over his animalistic side, he was given that gift because of his efforts, because of his story, didn't get it for free. Was given absolute control of the evil inclination. Not absolute control to be master over it, because that he achieved already before. Absolute control means to say that right now, now he served God with also his animal side, which means that his animal side no longer even desired or had any inclination towards material things to the extent that Abraham said, no, I don't want that. I'm not interested in that. It's not a worthwhile pursuit. There was no debate anymore. It now the, the, the force and the intensity of the evil inclination wasn't just dormant, wasn't controlled and ruled anymore, totally overturned and harnessed to spirituality. And that is what it means when God said, and God blessed Abraham with everything. Meaning to say that God blessed him with everything, meaning to say absolute and total control over his animal soul. And as we mentioned before, we can learn the Midrash also says a very interesting lesson that we learned from Otor Asha, from that wicked person Shechem, who abducted the daughter of Yaakov, Dina. Remember Shechem abducted the daughter of Dina and he raped her? And then he sends his father to go and appease Jacob and ask Jacob for a hand in marriage. And he was sick with love, it says. He couldn't, couldn't live without her. He was willing to do everything to the extent that when the, when, the, when the boys heard about this, they plotted revenge and they said, well, we can't give our daughter to someone who's uncircumcised and not only you, the whole nation. He was so lovesick that he convinced his whole nation to become circumcised. Can you imagine? The doctors were happy. Or in those days, the barbers... The barbers were happy. And the, the Pasuk says that he loved her. He had Ahava Deveka Vehasheka. He had a, a he, want, he wanted to cleave to her. He loved her. Vehasheka. And he had a desire to, for her. From, he, from, from the evil side, from that of temptation and desire and lust, we learn what it means to have a powerful, this powerful, what was the word they used? Drive towards a material thing that can be harnessed to godliness. We know. So we know. We have, we have it. It's just that this one desires this. You can desire a spiritual thing. You are able to be lovesick, so, so to speak, like David Shlomo HaMelech says, Nafshi avatecha, My soul so desires you that I'm lovesick. What does it mean lovesick? That I totally only think about you. And this is what it means when it says that God blessed Abraham Bakol. And that it says, Abraham Babayamim, and Abraham came of days. What does it mean, came of days? Abraham came of days. Abraham was elderly, 
Abraham Zaken, and he became elderly. Baba Yamim, he came of days. If you say he's elderly, he's old, you don't need to say, and you say his list is years, you don't need to say, and he came of days. What does it mean to say? Abraham is the attribute and epitome of love, love for God. And really, it's no accident by why that attribute is embedded in our first forefather because it says, Olam Hesed the world is built upon kindness and love. You can build a whole world with love. You destroy a world with hate, you build a world with love. Good word. Just say a good word to your husband or your wife. See what you get. See what you get. Try a compliment, a nice word. See what you get. You get much more, I guarantee you, you get much more saying, this, this is dinner. This is dinner. You call this dinner cold after I worked so late, so hard. This, this is dinner. You come along and you say, ah, this is dinner. And then you wink at your son. <laughs> now you say, thank you for toiling. Very nice. <laughs> You're all laughing, huh? No, it's possible. It's possible. I'm telling you it's possible. And with me, it's, it's, I don't need to. I've never needed to exercise that willpower, unfortunately. Or fortunately. Because my wife, my wife, thank God, cooks so wonderfully and beautifully with such love and she puts her whole heart into it. It always comes out good, thank God. But when it doesn't... No. You still say it's nice. But I'm, I'm just telling you that when you, when you go to a student, a child or anybody and say a good word, a word of love and a word of compassion, you, achieve, you build, you achieve so much. Can you imagine... When you turn to Hashem always in uh, appreciation and thanks instead of why did this happen? Why did that? Why did, Why does he have? Why did that? Why did that one? Always complaints and always bickering, but nice and appreciation. Love builds the world. Abraham Avinu is the attribute of love. Baba Yami means he brought it into every one of his days. It says in Yehoshua that the Jewish people served God all the days that Yehoshua lived. Which means to say that the influence and the power, the spiritual power of Yehoshua was such that every one of those days was a days of serving God. Any day that we do not battle, do battle with our evil inclination is a day not worth living. Is a day lost. In the times of Yeshua, every day was a valuable day because they did battle and they conquered the evil inclination. Abraham Avinu was such that he brought his attribute of love, love of God, love of spirituality to every dimension of his existence, to every day of his life. Now, let's take this a step further. Remember we said that Behema. Behema, the animal, is connected to the lower dimension, the name of God that refers to a more concealed dimension of godliness. And God blessed Abraham Bakol with everything. What was the numerical value that we said that is the numerical value of animals? Do you remember? Who remembers? 52. Bakol. What's the numerical value of Bakol? Bet is 2. Chaf is 20. Lamed is 30. Bakol. When it says in the Midrash that God blessed Abraham, Bakol means to say he gave him absolute and total control of his animalistic soul. Look what it says over here. Bakol is the same numerical value as animal. Which means not only that he ruled, mastered, controlled, but he actually harnessed it was his, totally his. Not that he ruled, he suppressed, he repelled. It was his. God blessed him by call. Means to say that he had total rule over the animal within him, that the animal within him also came, became godliness. So when, it, when, so when there was love, there was love for godliness. And godly things and spirituality. Now, 
Let's take this a step further. We know, now the, the, the word bakol is the acronym. You know what an acronym is? It means that each letter stands for another word. Bakol means Brit Karati Lainai. What is the first point of the desire of the inc evil inclination? The eyes. The eyes, correct. Very hard to rule the eyes. Ever, ever tried to rule your eyes? I have. Very difficult. Always keep your eyes down and focus on what you look at, only what you want to look. Very difficult. Human beings are always looking. There's noise. You look here. Always looking here. They're looking there. Looking there. And invariably, you see things that you shouldn't see. The Tsar tells us that if we, God forbid, see something that is forbidden, see something that is a desecration, of God's name, the desecration of Shabbat, it impacts and makes an imprint on the soul. So the eyes are the first point to the soul, to the mind, to the heart, and, and even to the soul. And when we see things, when we look at things, if we see something, that is the first point of desire, of pleasure, and desire, desiring that pleasure. When you see something, that I want that. It's appealing, it's luring. It's desire. Bakol, God bless Abraham, Bakol is the acronym of Brit Karati Lainaim. I, Abraham Avinu, made a covenant, means to say, I came to control my eyes. Laoznaim, my ears. Laoznaim, to my ears. Lesvatai to my, my lips. These are the hardest things to control. The eyes see. Here, it's very hard to control what you hear. Someone's coming and telling you, you know that scoundrel? You didn't know what he was going to say. If you knew in advance what he was going to say, and it was going to be something not nice or negative, you had the option to move away, but all of a sudden, you know, it's... You know, and he said something, you know, I wanted to tell you good advice and that, whatever. And he starts saying something nice. But don't you dare go and invest with that guy. He's a scoundrel and there's a lie and this and that. I'm not saying there are times that you have to say things. There are times you have to say things. There are times that you have to warn people. But that's not the scope of... All I'm trying to say is it's very hard to control what we hear. And it's very hard to control what we say. How many times have we said something that we regret? Even in one day. Bakol, Brit, Karati, Le'enai. To my eyes. How many eyes are there? Two. Le'oznai, to my ears. This Fatai, to my mouth. Two eyes, two ears, one mouth. How many, what's in America? How many of that? One, two, three, four, five. Correct? Okay, remember that. The Gemara in Mesech in the Darim says as follows. In the beginning, God caused Abraham Avinu, or allowed or empowered rather is a better word, Abraham Avinu to govern and rule over 248 limbs. We have 200 and, sorry, 243 limbs. We have how many limbs? 248 limbs. Ramah. Resh. Mem. 248 limbs we have altogether. Hands, fingers, uh, heart, liv, kidneys, all of that. 248. The Gemara in the Darim says that God in the beginning empowered Abraham Avinu to rule over 243. As is expressed by his name Avram. Before God changed his name Abraham. Before the circumcision. His name was Avram, right? What's the numerical value of Avram? 243. His very name hints to the fact that God empowered him to rule over 243 limbs. Where are the rest of those limbs? Which limbs are they? The Gemara says that they are limbs that they are very hard to control. And what are they? Two eyes, two ears. The Gemara doesn't say mouth, but really 
it's connected, and, and that's why I gave you that introduction a little bit before, the sexual organ. These are the four limbs that are hardest to control. And remember I said before that the sexual organ is connected to the mouth because the mouth and the sexual organ are all correspond to the name Ben, the last name or the last letter of God's name. It does, because the mouth and the sexual organ do the same thing. They transmit and communicate and interact with the other. I've got my emotions. If I don't tell you what I'm feeling, it's very hard for you. You may see that I'm a bit getting agitated, but you don't know what, what about. It's my mouth that causes a unity between me and you. It is a sexual organ that unites and that creates, just like a mouth creates an emotion. If I tell you a beautifully moving and stirring story, you could have tears. I arouse an emotion, an emotion of love or anger or or whatever it is, or disappointment, or, or, or sadness, whatever it is. And so too, the sexual organ creates a, 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 a child, an offspring. So Avram, but when God changed his name, and when he did the circumcision, he was named Avraham. No longer will your name be Avram, Avraham. And through the act of the circumcision, he came to purify even the sexual organ. Abraham, the numerical value of Abraham is 248, with his 248 limbs and sinews. So we can take it. The Brit, Bakol, God bless Abraham, Bakol is the two eyes, sorry, the two eyes, the two ears, and the mouth, which is interchangeable, as I mentioned to you before, with the sexual organ. Because again, they function at least spirit, spiritually and physically all have a, have a correlation. Do you, want, you understand how, right? They have a correlation. So, Bakol. You see again Bakol? Behema. Numerical value of animal. Now, let's take this a step further. Eliezer, when he came to the house of Laban, what did he say? Hashem. Berach et Adoni me'od. God blessed my master exceedingly. Me'od. What is the numerical value of me'od? 45. Which is the numerical value of the name higher than Ben 52. Me'od. Which is the numerical value of Adam. Adam, man. Which means that man, i.e. he came to the Epitome of man, he came to be a complete man by ruling over his behemah, his bakol, everything. We ran out of time, but ma'od, we ran out of time. We'll stop here. Any questions? All right, so it all comes in, all ties in. How the, the two names, the two names of God, which refers to the lower lower parts of this world or the lower dimensions of self man and animal adam hashem man and god does man and beast god brings salvation i gave a lecture on that by the way man and beast god brings salvation which means to say that man's interaction with beast with the animal side brings salvation brings the whole purpose brings together the whole reason why god created the world to uplift and elevate through the lowest level and that's why in Tov Me'od means exceedingly Me'od is a numerical value of Adam. When he interacts with the Yetzer Hara, as the sages say, Me'od means the Yetzer Hara, the Behema, that's the Bakol, numerical value of 52. Brit Karat, Brit Karati La'enayim, I have made a covenant with the eyes, with the ears, with the nose, etc., with the nose. <laughs> it's getting light. With the mouth, etc., and the 243 limbs, as opposed to the 248 limbs, which is the missing five, the two, uh, four, five, etc. It's getting late. I think we better stop here. Quit while you're ahead. <laughs>